The London Olympics are getting closer and the sacrifices along the way are mounting. I'm a person who likes going out, I like to have a laugh, like to have a little bit of drink on the side, you know what I mean? There's a part of me that says I don't want to dip. It takes single-mindedness to deliver when it matters most. Kick yourself and make something happen. But success brings new pressures as their personal achievements make their lives public news. You have to be very careful what you say in front of the media now. It could come back and stab you in the back. Tom Daly has dreamed of winning Olympic gold since he was nine years old. At the 2008 Beijing Olympics, at the age of 14, he was the youngest member of Team GB. His family made the 5,000 mile journey from Plymouth to support him. He's done what I would have loved him to have done. I can't ask any more of him. And if whatever happens in here tonight, if it's good or bad, he's up there in my books. Proudest dad in the world tonight. His dad, Rob, has watched every one of Tom's dives since his first ever training session. But as Tom's talent was starting to shine, Rob was having erratic mood swings. He was diagnosed with a massive brain tumour and needed life-threatening surgery to have it removed. I never, ever thought I'd go to see my son at an Olympics when I was diagnosed with a brain tumour. Because I thought, I'm going to have to wait like 10 years for him to go to an Olympics. He might not even go. I might miss it. But fortunately, when he qualified, it meant so much to me when I was 14 years old. It's really good to have your dad there and see him in the audience. It's something that I like just to see that he's there so that I can feel like I'm safe and I'm there and I can do what I can do. By the end of the games, he'd grab the attention of a worldwide audience. The schoolboy from Plymouth was becoming the focus of the world's media. I was in like the, my own little bubble kind of thing and you, you don't know anything that's happening. Everything's unknown outside and you don't know what's going on in the newspapers because you just don't see them. And for the first time, Tom experienced the negative side of the media. A reported argument with his diving partner, Blake Aldridge, caused a media feeding frenzy. It gave Tom his first taste of the cutthroat world of elite sport. I'm quite happy with the way I dived. Um, I didn't really miss much. Um, there's dives that could have been, been better. Just disappointed that it didn't happen. They get more coverage than the Chinese gold medalists, despite finishing last. Blake, I'm getting the bus back, OK? It was always going to be a case of both of us holding our heads together. And, and I've got a lot more experience than Tom. I've been around the block a few times. So, uh, I was all right. I didn't dive to the best of my ability, but I can go home happy with the way I performed. Unfortunately, Tom didn't dive to the best of his ability, and, and it was hard work for me trying to, trying to gear him up. I didn't really know anything that was going on about me and Blake in the press, and I just thought that it was <laughs> blown out of proportion when I saw it at home. My dad showed me, and I was like, oh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, this is quite a big thing then. Like it or not, the media attention from his first Olympics has made Tom Britain's most famous 14-year-old. My life has changed because of, like, people recognising you in the streets and, like, I walked into a restaurant with my friends, the whole restaurant started clapping. So far, Tom's been able to enjoy his fame. Along with his biggest fan, his dad. There's Tom on the red carpet on the way in. I couldn't believe when they were all, Tom, look this way, look this way. A lot of people are now, whenever we go anywhere, they're coming up, Tom, can we have a quick picture? Vernon Kay, 
Got Gary Lineker. You know, it's the celebrities wanting pictures with Tom there, as well as Tom wanting pictures with them. Dizzy Rascal. This is one of my favourites. Joan Collins and Danny Minogue. I think it goes without saying. I think that would be most people's favourites. I don't know who that is. With his newfound celebrity status, Tom's now rubbing shoulders with some of Britain's most successful sports stars. He's been invited to take part in a celebrity version of The Weakest Link. I only came seventh at the Olympics kind of thing. What's the big deal? I felt really guilty for being there because everyone else was like Olympic gold medalists or they were, they were all knights and it was like, Christ, I'm studying and I'm like the only one who hasn't got a gold medal and I was like, but hey, I'm going to hopefully get one in the future, so you never know. What was more frightening, competing in the Olympics or all those millions of people seeing you in your trunks? <laughs> um, I'd say the competing. Is it? Good. Guess what, Tom? Yeah. You are the weakest link. Bye. When you're actually there with Anne Robertson staring in your face, it's a heck of a lot harder, put it that way. <laughs> Tom is yet to prove himself as a champion. Now he has an added pressure. He has to cope with being a 15-year-old celebrity, performing under the gaze of an ever-hungry media. For the last five months, one of British judo's biggest 2012 medal hopes has been serving a ban from the sport. And here's Ashley McKenzie! 19-year-old yeah. Ashley McKenzie lives at home in Wilsdon with his mum. I told him he has to be in by 11 o'clock because I have to go to bed early because I have to wake up to go to work. And Ashley was late. I went to go and look for him because I heard the police helicopter outside. And Ashley was strolling around the corner and I embarrassed him with one in front of his mates, so Ashley got very upset with me and then decided to say, sod it, Mum, I'm not staying in the night, and he walked out. Not saying it's bad, but what I'm trying to say is that is she, she gives me a certain limit where I can step to. And if she let me pass that limit, then I think I'd be in prison or something, because I wouldn't come home, I'd be doing drugs. Ashley has the potential to win Britain's first ever judo gold medal at the London Olympics. He's one of the most talented juniors in the world. In 2008, he was given a chance to join Britain's elite squad, but he threw it all away. I got banned for basically uh, drinking, late curfews, uh, being rude, smoking. Me and trouble just like this get me up. Like, I know trouble a lot better than I know my mum probably. Like. His behaviour has been an issue as long as his mum can remember. Started nursery, his behaviour was just unbelievable for a two-year-old kid. He would pick up baked bean tins and throw them across the room. He would just be like non-stop on the go. He was assessed, found out that he was immature for his age group, and then he was diagnosed with HDAD. To help control his ADHD, Ashley's been on various drugs which are banned from elite sport. He was given dispensation by the governing body, but since he turned 18, he's decided not to take them anymore. To be fair, they weren't really good where I couldn't just like, do a normal day like everyone else. I'd be like up and down, up and down, up and down. So that really wasn't helping my judo at all. So I just decided to come off them rather than stay on them. And if I do get banned, like I have been, that's the risk too. Today, Ashley has a chance to stage a comeback at the British National Trials. If he wins a medal, he'll be back on the elite squad and his dream of competing at the Olympics will be back on track. He knows, he knows today this is the day, this is the judgment day for him, and I think he would do his best, or he would do his utmost best to get a medal. I've come to support him on this one. Ashley's brother Aaron has come along with his mum to support him. Come on, squeeze the legs, Yay! squeeze the legs in time. In the competition, he shows what a formidable opponent he is and makes it through to the final guaranteeing a place back on the British elite squad. 
He faces one more fight for the gold medal. Come on, that sleeve's important. Protect us. Ashley's bad boy reputation works against him, and the crowd start to boo. The fight soon turns into an ill-tempered contest. The um, opponent kicked Ashley in the groin, what was seen by a number of people, and the referee didn't do nothing. Come on, stay calm, stay calm. Go on, and up, another drop. With his concentration in tatters, he has to make do with a silver medal. Ashley's frustration finally boils over. I was angry. I couldn't bother and I just thought, I'm gonna stick a finger up, so I just did. A local photographer captures Ashley making an obscene gesture. I know it wasn't the right thing to do, but obviously when you get frustrated, things just happen, don't they? Outraged, the judges disqualify him from the competition stripping him of his medal and his place on the British squad. Look, the whole crowd's against me. What the... F what does everyone want me to do? What do you want me? Do you want me to go in the middle of the match? Leave it. No, leave it. Leave it. Go on my back. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. He got kicked in the nuts and booed by an entire crowd. What do you want from him? It's not fair. I'm so sorry. It's not fair. It's not... Judo's not worth a piss in hell. Judo's not worth it. For the second time this year, Ashley's dreams to compete at the London Olympics lie in tatters. Shauna Thompson is one of the fastest 17-year-olds in the world. She's the youth Commonwealth champion and is tipped to be a future Olympic gold medalist. She lives in Manchester with her mum. 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 So far, she's had to balance her sporting ambitions with other commitments. Oh, baby. Go on, kitty cat. Out. Go on. At the same time as trying to become a future Olympic champion, Shauna's training to become a nurse. Yeah, I think it was when my sister had her first baby, it was. And that's when I wanted to be a midwife. By day, Shauna's working on a recovery ward for stroke victims. You all right, do you look honest? Oh, yeah, like this. Yep. It's like job satisfaction, isn't it? Like when you see someone smile or like when you've helped them and they really appreciate it. In the evening, Shauna has another passion. I do 100 and 200 metres. Hopefully the female Usain Bolt, should I say that? <laughs> OK, folks, face up. Her coach, Bob Gacy, knows what a rare find she is. She hasn't achieved anything yet, really, but she's tremendous raw talent. Every coach will turn around and say, oh, you're lucky if you can get an athlete like that. With her mum's job at Morrison's their only source of income, Shauna's struggled to finance her athletics. I feel sick. So sick. Two years ago, she came up with a drastic plan to get hold of some money. This is the Fortune Five. They want to give away one million pounds of their own money. If you want some, all you have to do is ask. Hi, my name's Shana Thompson. I'm 14 years old, and my ambition is to represent Great Britain in the 2012 Olympics. <laughs> the cost of spikes, trainers and kit is getting too much for my mum to afford. Tell us how much this really means to you. It's all right, take, take your time, take your time. It does mean a lot because, like... To be honest, I think it's people like you that make us really proud of our country, and I, I'm going to be in. She walked away with £6,000 every year till the Olympics. Right, come on, let's get it done. With the financial support, she's been able to continue training, but two years on, she's yet to make an impression against senior athletes. She's been given a massive opportunity to take on top-level athletes in a one-off street race in her hometown. On the bill is the fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt. 
and Christine Ahorogu. Racing against seasoned Olympic medalists will be a massive challenge. You know you can improve your 100 metre time. Yeah. So do it. <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking we've got good athletes in. I was thinking I just want to get to the final. That's my main thing right now. In her heat, she faces three Olympic athletes, including Christina Horigu, the reigning world, Olympic and Commonwealth champion over 400 metres. I was trying to look professional <laughs> because I was like, I've got so many more people that have done this more times than me, and I was like, I've got to blend in. She does the unthinkable and beats Christina Horogu. Yes! Yes! Shauna's limited training means she hasn't got the stamina to keep up in the final. But her performance is enough for a bronze medal. Getting to the London Olympics will be a huge challenge for a trainee nurse who fits her training in after college. And here it is, arms folded in disgust that were a couple of minutes late picking them up. In Plymouth, Tom Daly is finding that fame does not come without a cost. I noticed gradually that Tom, every time I took him training, he wasn't talking to me so much. He had lost his bubble a little bit, and I could sense something was wrong. After coming back from the Olympics, it got, I got the odd name call, in, and then it kind of got more and more and more and more. And then it, I thought it would reach a peak and then just go away. And then when it reached the peak, it kind of just stayed there. And after eight months of people calling me names like um, Diver Boy, Speedo Boy, um, how much your legs worth, break them kind of thing, Throwing paper, tipping pencil cases out. It's, it wasn't something that was like hurting me or anything, and it's not something that gets to me. It was just really annoying that you can't like walk around school and be normal. As a mum, I tried to sort it out as much as I could, but obviously, unless I walked around the school with him, there wasn't a lot I could do. It got better, but it was still happening, kind of thing. So, like when the teachers turned their back, it would happen. There are other pressures on Tom. To control the media's appetite for him, British diving arranged special days where they're given access. I had a media day just before Easter, and I, I was like telling him that it was a bit annoying that I couldn't be normal, and then the next day it was bullied at school kind of thing. Before he knew it, his bullying had become a national story. When it got blown out of proportion like that, you can't really go back to that school because it would have been 10 times worse. In the wake of the media coverage of Tom's comments, Rob decided to pull him out of school. I definitely think that you have to be very careful what you say in front of the media now, because anything you, you say, they can twist it into the way that they want to say it. So it's kind of good how they do it and very clever, but it can also come back and stab you in the back, I guess. Ben is dad's favorite. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Such a creep. I kind of just dealt with the whole thing because if I was to be sat at home and not be diving, it probably would have been a lot worse on me. But because I do diving as well, it's very, it's, it's good to get away from everything. It's kind of like a second world, so I could just go to the diving pool and just escape everything. Tom's in Sheffield for the Diving World Series, where he faces the same competitors who beat him at the Olympics. With everything that's going on, Tom has to make sure he stays focused on his diving.
The competition includes the Olympic gold medalist, the Olympic silver medalist, and the world youth champion. Tom has never beaten any of them. He'll need all his mental resilience to make the most of his talent. With a dive taking less than two seconds, there's no room for error. Concentration is the key. In a competition, I found that visualization was something that I wanted to do. I cover my eyes with a chamois and just like literally visualize the dive as I would do it. So I can imagine myself standing on the board, doing my arm swing and spinning around each somersault. And then when I go on to seven meter, which is the next board up, I do a dry land run through, which is basically doing all the actions that I would do on the dive. So when I go on to 10 meter, I've already done everything and I can just go on there and give it my best, I guess. With two dives to go, Tom is down in fourth place. To stand a chance of winning a medal, he has to perform his final and technically most difficult dive to perfection. Tom's last dive earns him a silver medal and means he beats the Olympic champion. Thomas, that's fucking awesome. Thank you. After the escape of the competition, Tom has to face the increasing attention that comes with success. If he gets fed up with it, he'll give me a look. And when he gives me a certain look, that's the time to uh, pull him out. <laughs> After being disqualified at the national trials, Ashley's had time to reflect on his future. I'm a person who likes going out, likes having a laugh. That's some little bit drink on the side, you know what I mean, and having fun. But the side of me says that that will come in all good timing, you know what I mean? I, I want to get a long pick, so I want to get that one of the first golds, like in 212. So if I want to want it, I'm going to have to start risking certain things in my life to do that. And if that's what I'm going to have to do, then obviously that's what I'm going to have to do to get there. There's no doubting Ashley's ability at judo. There's hundreds of them. That was Ashley Silver when he won uh, Masters 2008, Brenham. That's the Commonwealth Games, when Ashley went to Commonwealth Games. See? Oh. Despite his repeated bans, British judo recognise he's a talent too good to waste. A couple of the managers from the BJ phoned us and said that we were going to have a meeting regarding Ashley to get back onto the squad. And it was spoken about, could Ashley, you know, are you going to put 100% into judo, are you going to commit yourself, basically? If you really want to go to Olympics, then that's what we want to know. And if you're willing to do what we say, obviously we're hoping to get you there and get a medal. So I said, I want to do it. British judo have offered Ashley a chance to train with the elite squad in Dartford. It's a squad set up with one aim, to get British fighters to the London Olympics. Long, long way. Given Ashley's track record, he'll have to be more focused than ever before. I think more than ever now, Ashley wants it. Just to prove to people that he can get there. I think there's quite a lot uh, that I've got to prove to other people. Ashley's coaches know what it's going to take to reach London 2012. These are often the turning points where it either goes two ways and the best people in the world are the hardest workers. Without the focus and the hard work, he's not going to make it. Darren keeps talking to me about keep your head down and don't worry about the others, just worry about yourself, basically. And just don't get naughty, uh, don't be naughty. Uh, and answer back and stuff, just keep it in your head. Three, two, what? Ashley, stop cheating. Because <laughs> Ashley keeps, seems to think he's faster than everyone in the world, so... Three, two... What's wrong with you? Go! <laughs> now Ashley's stopped taking his medication for ADHD, his whole future rests on his own ability to control his behaviour. 
won, basically. Who won then? Who won? So basically, you actually won both of them. Did I not see? Did I not see? I will win there. Go and get me. Please. 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 Because you kept just saying, where's my car? Where's my car? In Manchester, Sean is trying to become an elite athlete. After the high of the Manchester street race, she's had a major setback. After the 150 run, like it felt like I just had stomach ache. It was getting worse and it got so bad, like, I, and I couldn't walk back. I had to like stop for about five minutes until I could walk back and until it, like the pain had eased off. And I didn't understand what it was. Bob's arranged a visit to a sports physiotherapist to see if she'll be able to compete at the World Youth Championships in three weeks' time. OK, it's confirmed what yeah. we thought it was, so this condition of osteitis pubis. This is at the lower end of the range at the moment, thankfully. At the other end of the scale, the very severe end of the scale, it can be the end of a career. There are two potential ways of dealing with this. One way is complete rest <laughs> and the season off, which you're kind of aware of, and that is possibly the safest thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the second way of dealing with it is to look at low-grade exercise. And if we can do that, I think that will be a reasonable way forward. Yeah. You OK with that, girl? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. She's been given the all-clear to compete. But the pelvic injury means she has to reduce her training when she should be increasing it. I'm going to be devastated. I think that I planned to do it's just, like, gone out the window. So it's like it should have just like not planned nothing. It's like that's what it feels like. I just worry for her. Being injured is forcing Shauna to consider her long-term future. Okay, Shauna, let's go and make her bed. My mum, she she wants me to carry on with education because last year I had an amazing season. And then this year I've got an injury which stopped me from competing to the best of my ability. So you can't really tell, so you've just got to keep on with your education because that's the one thing you can always fall back on. You can't always fall back on athletics. In Plymouth, there's a new start for Tom. That's too early. After the story of his bullying appeared in the national press, his dad, Rob, got calls from a number of private schools. Rob accepted a scholarship for Tom from a local school specialising in elite sport. Tom, are you, how long are you going to be? I'm just not very good at waking up. It's kind of like Hogwarts. It's very like big, tall corridors with um, that are old-fashioned, but that's what you imagine a big school to be like, and it's like it's like it's quite cool actually. It's it's kind of like all the nice people at Egg Buckland at Plymouth College without all the Idiots as such. So now I can pick up my ton of bricks bag. At his new school, Tom no longer has to put up with the daily taunts. The school has 50 elite athletes that come here. So there's lots of swimmers that are here and that train every day like I do, so they kind of understand what we have to go through. Being able to fit his lessons around his diving commitments has had an immediate effect on Tom. Sir, yes. how did... He absolutely loves it. He's only been there three days now, and he's a different person already. You know, it wasn't like that before. I've hit my head on the board twice. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, one here. <laughs> this guy. Oh. Oh. And sometimes you stand on the edge of the board and you just think, I can't do it. You just come down. Really? I don't expect him to say thank you, Dad. He doesn't always thank me. But I know that, you know, he smiles at me every time he dives. He sticks a sly thumb up to me. He gives me good eye contact. He knows that I'm there watching him. He, appre he appreciates what I've done and he appreciates what I've done for him. As he grows up, his dad's fanatical support is as committed as ever. But now he's 15. Tom doesn't always appreciate the way his dad celebrates. Everywhere I've been, we've heard the Chinese national anthem because they always seem to win everything. And when the British national anthem played, and I sung that national anthem on my own as loud as I could. That's how proud I was. All you could hear was like dad, like 
singing it, like pretending he's at a football match when everyone stood there silently. He's shouting out like a idiot. Instead of singing it normally, he just shouts it out as if he's a Proud dad. hooligan. No. Proud dad was singing the national anthem. Yeah, but I was out of tune. I, no, it wasn't out of tune. It was out of tune, Dad. Yeah, just when thing. you have kids of your own, and if they've achieved, ever achieved what you've achieved, you might feel like doing the same. You wouldn't sing it. You wouldn't embarrass them. No, I don't care. It's, it's what is in here which makes you do it. No. I would do it again and again. In two weeks' time, Rob will be supporting Tom at his toughest competition since the Olympics the World Championships. It's been six months since Ashley's been allowed back on the elite training she squad. She said, I don't think he'd do it. He's worked hard. Um, he's got up every day. He's gone to Dartford. And basically, he's, he's done what they've asked of him. His determination is rewarded and he's voted most improved junior of the year. He laughs and he's too cool for school, really, but it, you can see a glimmer of uh, just probably how proud he is of himself, and um, he should be. But things have been turbulent at home. His mum's had to throw out his brother, Aaron. Unless there's something's in here. He did go through that kind of rough patch, basically just arguments, fights on the streets, like, blaming people for like him moving out and basically had to move on, yeah. Ashley can't let this distract him. He's been selected to represent Britain at the World Cup, a major senior international competition. It's a crucial step in getting to the London Olympics in 2012. In his first round fight, he's up against a seasoned veteran the difficulty for Ashley is that he has to pump up his aggression to fight well, but still stay in control. <laughs> Ashley's beaten his opponent in the past and hopes he can do the same again today. Representing Great Britain, Ashley McKenzie. This time, the crowd is on Ashley's side. Just seconds into the fight, Ashley is penalised for being too defensive. With a minute to go, his frustration starts to show and he is penalised again. Basically too strong for me. Tried to get it back and every time I dropped, he basically knew what I was going to do. We go, we go. It's not the result he'd hoped for, a first round defeat. A loss of control over his temper now would be a disaster. Despite the disappointment, Ashley manages to stay in control of his behaviour. I think I've worked the hardest I can, you know what I mean? It just pisses you off that you can't, like, beat someone who you know you could beat. Why is you work hard, you know what I mean? To me, it's not even about proving the point now. It's just doing my duty. I don't care what other people think about me. If he's very, very strong, really strong, he, he, he can, he can uh, up, 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 up. Ashley's proved to the British judo coaches that their faith in him was justified. The London Olympics are within his reach. I will see you In Sheffield, Jess Ennis is trying to forget about the worst year of her life. We've just got a new puppy, and she's eight weeks old, and she's called Myla, and she's so cute. <laughs> it's just like a nice distraction. Come on. At 23, she's one of the great British hopes for London 2012. Yes. 
She competes in seven events over two days in one of athletics' most grueling competitions. Last year, she was on the brink of proving she was the greatest heptathlete in the world. But the strain of competing in seven events caught up with her. Jess, 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 leave it, leave it. She suffered three fractures to the most stressed part of her body, her right foot. The injury was so serious that not only was Jess unable to go to her first Olympics, but doctors also told her she would never be the same athlete again. The closest she got to Beijing was watching it from her sofa. I'm into my Cheerios at the moment. Kind of have different fads, don't you? Different cereals each week. See you later. Unable to train, Jess has to make do with doing promotional work for her sponsors. Everything you watched and you know listened to is all about the Olympics. Sort of wishing that I was there and a part of it, even though it's horrible and really hard to deal with. I always telling myself that you know that it must have really happened for a reason. You kind of have to tell yourself things like that. Her recovery is more than about just regaining her fitness. There are two events that put a huge amount of strain on her right foot the high jump and the long jump. She had to make a drastic change. Physios, if they thought it would be a good idea to change legs in the long jump, and I was like, no way. I was like, it's going to be too hard. Come on now, hop, big, bop, 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 come on. Jess's coach, Tony Minicello, is the mastermind behind the change. It's a massive undertaking, the equivalent of switching the hand you write with. We've got Two problems. We've got a brand new event, as it were, because it's the left leg long jump as opposed to last last time round. It was the right leg long jump, and we're battling against time. We need to we need to progress this very very quickly. There's a lot of demand leading up to 2012. There's a lot of demand leading up to the World Championships. If there isn't a result, they won't be sympathetic and say, "Oh, I know it's a brand new leg." They'll just go, "I'm sorry, it's crap. Your funding's cut. You're off." Yeah. After a year out with injury and a brand new yeah. event to master. The pressure on Jess is huge. Dig down deep in yourself. Find that real rawness, that animal. Come on, gotta get back out. We miss Beijing. Come on. Shauna's got a week off her nursing course to compete at the World Youth Championships in Italy. She'll be taking on the fastest teenagers in the world. When you're at a World Championships and have to come out and run faster than you've ever run before, under pressure, and you haven't practiced with it, that's a hell of a, hell of a demand. The pressure's too much for some. Shauna's at an age when many athletes decide to quit. Her lack of training and injury mean all she can manage in the 100 metres is fourth place. Just disappointing for her because it's fourth and she wasn't in the race for third place. But her injury is having a more worrying effect. The pains made Shauna tense up and hold her breath. At the end of the race, she has a severe asthma attack. Everyone started coming around and making a big deal of me and it was just like I knew what it was, I knew how to deal with it, but everyone was like, oh no, sit in the wheelchair, and I was like, no, I don't need to sit in a wheelchair. Right, no, I was devastated. It was just like, oh, why can't I be fit and be running them times? With all her recent setbacks and the huge disappointment of coming forth, Bob's worried that Shauna could give up. She was Great Britain's number one, she's now Great Britain's number two. She just doesn't want to talk to anybody kind of thing. You know, it's frustrating, man, because she, she knows she could have had these girls. The competition's not over, and with Shauna's confidence in tatters, she only just qualifies for the 200-metre final as a fastest loser. You've got to have an attitude about you now, all right? I don't want to be nasty or anything, but kick yourself and make something happen, yeah? Yeah. 
Shauna now gets additional funding from UK Athletics based on her performances. If she doesn't run well, she could lose the support she relies on. To stay on track, she has to equal her best time of the season. We've had a really good start. I think she knows how important it is. So it won't be for lack of trying. All I can do is stand here and hope and pray. Athletes in particular, it's, it's down to the individual. So you've got to have quite an ego, you know, to be able to step up there and then deliver. I mean, you talk about pop stars walking onto stage and performing in front of thousands. It's the same thing for an athlete, and they've got to have that temperament. They've got to want to produce on the day in front of everybody. It'll take a massive effort from Shauna. <laughs> Girl. She finishes in fifth place. But her time is fast enough to ensure that her funding should be secure for another year. You got it right, yeah. don't worry. Yeah? No, I have. I am. I'm happy. Good. Because yeah? that's all good, James. That's all you needed that's to do. Good. Yeah? Slow down. I'm gonna cry <laughs> yeah. with not sad tears. For Shauna, it's a personal right. victory. Everyone who does athletics will always say, oh, when I'm on the start line, I always think to myself, why do I put myself through this? But then you put yourself through it because you like the outcome. If you do really good, then it's amazing. Proudest guy around. <laughs> Are you? I just, I just couldn't imagine my life without doing athletics. I can't explain it better than that. <laughs> if I got my first step right, it would have been all right, but... No, no, no. That was all I asked you to do. 2367, equal your PB. Yeah. On all the hassle you've had. Fantastic. In Sheffield, Jess Ennis is getting desperate. The gamble to switch feet in the long jump is in danger of not coming off. Be ready to rock, Michael. With three months until the World Championships, Tony's enlisted the help of biomechanists to analyze exactly where Jess is going wrong. So even if you take the vertical and horizontal components of that... The team have found that Jess is jumping off her toes when she hits the board. This kills her speed when she jumps and means she falls short of her target of 6 metres 30. Like, what do you want to be able to take into the World Champs and what do you want to be able to Mate, fix in your so four tell you what, year As much as I can get in the World Champs, I'll have. Although they know what she needs to do, getting Jess to master it all will be a different matter. You've got a six pack, freaking use it. Get the work done, kid. Yeah, to work. What do you think this is? Holiday camp? Tom's in Rome at the World Championships. He's going to take on the best divers in the world. It will be the biggest test of his nerve he has ever faced. Tom's dives are simpler than his opponent's and worth fewer points. To stand a chance, he'll need a near-perfect performance, entering the water vertically with no splash. I was so nervous, my heart was going like the clappers, and then I just thought I'd take off, give it everything, jump as high as I can, spin as fast as I can, just do everything as well as I can, and hopefully then I've got no regrets. First three and a half somersaults with Tuck. Yes! Come on, Tom! What a dive! What a dive! I was out there to win it because I learned from the Olympics that I was telling myself too much that I was going there for experience and going there and not expecting anything. Uh, but when you go that, to a competition and expect something and want something, you've got a different attitude. By his final dive, Tom has got himself into a medal-winning position. Now all the pressure is on his opponents. Next up is the Olympic champion. Oh! Just let it go over slightly, throwing up a little bit of splash. He makes a mistake. It hands Tom the silver medal. As I slowly started climbing up the ranks, I just couldn't believe it. The gold medal favourite is last to dive. 
Oh my word! Oh my goodness! In the pressure, he crumbles, handing Tom the gold. I didn't know what to do. I was just like kind of fell to the floor. I didn't know what to do. I was just didn't know what to do. Tom Daly is the world champion. And Steve Foley he called it the domino effect, and I was the one pushing the dominoes over, and they just fell flat. Kind of thing. After watching his son dive to the top over the last six years, this is the moment Rob's been waiting for. I wanted to see him. Everyone else had saw him, shook his hand, congratulations, Tom. But poor old dad hasn't. I decided to go and look for Tom. So I wanted to see him. I came across his room with a double door wide open. After a few minutes, realised that it, there was a press conference going on. Waited till they come here, uh, asked if there was any more questions. I stuck my hand up. I represent Tom Daly. Tom Stad. Tom, come here, come here. Please. Come on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Time and a place. Not a press conference. Uh, it wasn't a press conference. Yes, it was a press conference. It's what the press made it out to be. It wasn't a press conference. How is that not a press conference? No, it wasn't a press conference? You sit up the front with tables, microphone, and a man asking you to ask questions. That's a press conference. No, it's not. Why was it called a press conference room then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Such a. Good lord. Hey. Oh, I was so emotional. <laughs> um, it's hard to convey if you've never been in that position. He's going through embarrassing dad, like, don't even go anywhere with him or else. Be afraid to be embarrassed. Well, he's start, he start, I suppose You're he's embarrassing. I don't care what Tom made of it. I don't care what anyone made out of it. I would have done what any proud dad would have done. Oh God. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Not cool at all. Not cool. In Berlin. Jess is about to face the biggest challenge of her life. It's just that, that last little bit before where you just want it to start and get on with it. Because yeah. the nerves are building up loads now, so it's scary. This is her first major competition in over two years. It will be the biggest audience she has ever performed in front of. She's starting to get a bit nervous now. It's because everything outside of this is a bit, it's low key. This is the real deal, this is the big show. I was really nervous because I just kept thinking that I was going to fall over. I didn't say it to anyone, but at the back of my head, I just kept thinking. Fall over, that's just everything gone. No. And I just kept, I couldn't stop thinking that. A win in the hurdles is a great start. Oh, she's got it. So now her lead is up to 181 points. That was fast and it's long. Oh, my goodness. After an incredible performance, she ends the first day with the third highest score of all time. Really, really good day. I just want to do the same tomorrow. But all this could still come to nothing. The first event of day two is the long jump. Hey, have a good one. The pressure to get it right is massive. Are you nervous? Oh, we are kind of jiggy. Oh, okay, excited for the long jump. These are two, even the coaches get anxious about long jump, long jump and high jump. A bad performance could cost her the chance of winning a medal. The runways have looked OK, to be honest, in terms of rhythm. Jess, Jess, the adrenaline, you'll be flying. Now then, Jessica, if you nail this one and get a good, good distance, I reckon we can present the gold medal to you now. I didn't get off. I towed it and didn't get off. Drive out of 
the back, good strides, build your speed. Jess, you okay? You just need to put your foot down flat on the board, stand up on it, drive the knee. When it matters most, eight months of trying to master long jumping off her left foot finally pays off. She jumps close to her previous best. With one event to go, all that's between Jess and her dream of winning her first gold medal at a major championships is two laps of the track. In the heat of the race, the adrenaline takes over. She's probably full of nervous energy. She's gone hard. Eight, nine, sixty, one. Holy shit! Oh my God! What noise? What noise? She's hurting. Sorry, boys. I gotta stand. Absolute lunacy. There is the smile. And I bet there's somebody else in the stadium who's smiling. This year is just like a whole new level. Not having the opportunity to compete at the Olympics has just made me really, really focused and even more determined this year. And just made me really, really eager to, you know, pull out all the stops and start winning medals. My injury is just a big, a big blow, and I just can't believe how much things have changed. And now, now I'm the world champion. It's just it's surreal. I can't believe it. But becoming world champion brings a new level of fame and media attention. The London Olympics will put our athletes in the spotlight like never before. Being able to cope with the pressure will be key to their success. I don't see myself as famous. I just think of myself as a normal person. I do normal things. I go out with my mates. I still have to go to school. I still have annoying brothers. For me, I just, I've just been normal all along, and it's kind of, when people say that, oh, Tom, you're famous, it's kind of like, I don't think I am. It just doesn't feel like it's happening to me. It feels like it's happening to another Tom kind of thing. It's something that I've kind of just got used to, I guess. Imagine if he wins an Olympic medal. It's going to be crazy. It's probably something really big there. <laughs> For the next three weeks, Britain's youngest ever world champion is looking forward to some time off. Three weeks I've got off, I could go on holiday, be in the pool, be a 15-year-old. It'd be good to just be, like, normal for three weeks. <laughs> oh, no, Dad's got the pool. <laughs> to find out more about sports psychology with the Open University, visit bbc.co.uk slash Olympic Dreams. Medal-winning hurdler Tasha Danvers is one of the guests for A Question of Sport on Friday night here on BBC One at 7.30.